Let's hope you guys are well. Um, if you guys don't know me, uh, my name is Mr. Taylor. I was a former student at Bill High School and I now teach geography. Um, I've been asked to do a video about personal statement making and what university is like by Mr. O'Connell. Um, to help me, I've got another former student by the name of Nitesh and He's currently at uni in his final year, should be finishing in the next few weeks. And I thought if I ask him a few questions to help you guys out, it would benefit you. So, do you want to say hi? Hello? I'm Nitesh and uh, yeah, I'm a history student at uh, SOAS. And uh, yeah, what do you want to know? Um, right, so I thought before we get into personal statement writing and things about university, if you just give a brief introduction about what you do at university and sort of the journey he's taken you on maybe just 30, 30 seconds to a minute what do you mean like as in where it took me to get to uni or what I'm doing at uni now um, what you're doing at uni now and where where you're going to see yourself at the end of it I guess because you're in your last or, few and weeks what I've, what I've done over the yeah. last three years yeah you're in your last few weeks now well obviously I, I do a three year course so the next three four weeks are my final weeks of uni um, and uh, well, that'll be the end of it, and then I have uh, get my results a month after. And um, well, one thing one thing I would tell you is that I I picked history at university because because it was my highest grade, and I it was the subject I enjoyed the most at A level, and that's quite an important thing. You wanna when you're picking your university course, and you're picking your university, you wanna specifically pick a subject which you're passionate about and which you think you can do for three years because if you pick something that you're not particularly interested in and you do it for three or four years by the end of it you're going to get sick of it and you're going to wonder why you went to yeah, university I can, I can vouch place. for that I can vouch for that so why did you choose SOAS? why SOAS out of any uni? well I had had five I don't know if it's still the same but I picked five universities yeah it's still the same still the same so I had uh, Queen Mary Royal Holloway, um, Kings, UCL, and SOAS. And now that list, most people probably end up going UCL, like myself. Yeah, UCL and Kings are the most popular out of those. And even though I've um, got offers from all of the all of the universities, the reason why I picked SOAS, even though it probably doesn't have the same reputation as as uh, Kings and UCL, is that it's the course was tailored to my liking so what they were teaching was something which no other university was teaching so in terms of the history aspect even when you go on to the university stage it's it's a lot of the same of what you're learning at a level in terms of you're learning about european history and american history so western history in in, in general and I think what I you're realize. trying to say, sorry, I think what you're trying to say is that it's just the uni was tailored to your interests at the end of the day. That's what I already, I already said that. No, oh, right, I, didn't, I didn't get that. But, yeah, so... But, yeah, but just... it's, it's, you, you're, you're basically, you want to pick a university where you know that the stuff you're going to learn is something that interests you. So it's not, it's not just, and it's not just that, oh, you like that subject, so you're going to go to a university to do that subject you you also want to pick the right university for that subject yeah, so that's that's true yeah that's, and that's uh, point. um yeah. obviously when you're making your application personal statement is a big big like step of it it's, it's probably one of the most important steps after you've picked your five universities um obviously you wrote your personal you're supposed to be about three and a half or four years now when you wrote your personal statement isn't it really? yeah for so four years obviously for me you could probably now work out my age at school, but it would have been about four, six years ago, six, no, actually seven years ago, I would have done my personal statement. I'm still quite fresh in my head, really, but here's, the, some, here's some of the tips I have for personal statement writing, and I want to see if you agree or with what you can add to each of the things I say. So I, I, I say if you keep it simple, your personal statement, don't, try not to make it too complex in language, you want to make it easy to follow and an easy structure. What do you what do you think about that? I mean, I think I think that's definitely 
true, but it's also I think you got to remember that you when you're writing your personal statement is even though you want it to be coherent, you want to in, in terms of language you want to look at what subject you're doing and try use terminology and language which that's is suitable point. for that subject. The point is about yeah, so that that's a good point. But the point about keeping it simple is that you you want whoever whichever admissions to or at the uni whoever's reading it including yourself and anyone yeah, else you, you, crucial, they, they have to be able to understand exactly what you're saying if they get lost yeah. in your personal statement they're not then unfortunately they're not going to really focus on it you'd probably end up going to the bottom of the pile because they want someone who can show who could showcase why they want to come to the uni why they want to study what what they've chosen but in a way that comes forward um mm. other things i say you have to obviously you have to obviously write why you're applying Right, that's a key thing. You can't just yeah. Why you're sure applying, you. why you're applying. I've also got what makes you suitable. The whole thing about personal statements is that you're obviously writing about yourself. And personally, for me, even though I've written a few personal statements, done lots of job applications, I still find writing about myself pretty hard. So it's not an easy. It's not. It's not. It's not an easy thing, but it's good practice for the future. So you have to write what makes it. What makes you suitable. But one thing which has changed from when I was... Well, not changed exactly from when I was doing personal statement writing to get into uni, but something which has become more important now than I wanted to... And I think I think it was probably this... I think it became more important when you were doing yours was having a... Having a rather than making it broad, your personal statement, try to have one big focus. So maybe what led you to make your decision to study your particular subject... So including your own experiences or the idea yes. that you might have, for example, read a book which then sparked your interest and so on and so forth. So what do you that that's that's what that's what I found now in personal statement writing is if you keep it Yeah, yeah that's, focused. that's definitely true. So what did you do when you did your personal statement? I know it's a bit uh, much to remember, but from so I remember the first thing I did even even before I wrote my personal statement okay, and I went straight to the history department and I asked them so that's that's the first thing I'd say the first step is is if you know what subject you're going to do okay and you're sure on it go go to that department go to the teacher you feel comfortable talking to in that department and maybe sit down with them for five five minutes or so and just try to get the conversation out. It actually it doesn't even have to be a teacher. It's just someone else maybe who also wants to do the same same subject as you. Is first thing you want to do is you want to actually articulate your ideas and you want to find where you mm. where your like passion sparks from. So with my personal statement, um I talked to Mr. Rigby. So you know him, he's he's, he's still, still there, there, right? Still, still yeah, I school. I talked to Mr. Rigby and uh I found out that my that a good way to start it is with like a story or anecdote. So I spent two, three uh, sentences just saying that when I was when I was younger, I had read a book and it sparked my interest in uh, football, but not just football, the game of football, but the history of football. And that was the important part of it. That this, rather than the book, like saying that, oh, I'm I was interested in football after reading the book. I'm took it next the next level and was like after reading this book is I found that it wasn't just history and I mean it wasn't just football which I became interested in it was it was the history of football so I've actually like pinpointed pinpointed it yeah and and that's, I think that's important that and it, it, it doesn't have to be like anything like cheesy or anything like that so it, it doesn't have to be like I was like five years old and then I discovered I had a history uh, like a passion for so and so it could even be like last year it could be something that which was happened in the last year or two so, but it just has to be personal to you and i yeah. think it's important spending uh, a few lines on that the, the key thing obviously that's been said is it's personal to you it's called a personal statement so it has to be personal to you the, the, the universities are going to read hundreds and thousands of personal statements as it is anyway you need to make your stand out and what better than than your own experiences i guess so that is key, the focus and your own experience, what led you, almost like a journey. You can walk, you can you can literally walk through your journey on your personal statement. 
as a focus. Now, obviously, you're not gonna. It's not. It's not a story. So you're not writing a story. But it's important that you do show that. Show that to come across. But also, you include your key skills. So when it comes to key skills, you, your talk. You're gonna. You're gonna have to talk about the key skills you've learned from that subject. How you're gonna develop those skills and what new skills you hope to learn at that particular uni, doing that particular subject. So if we go back to the skills sort of aspect. You did history, so obviously yours is tailored to history. I've obviously done geography, mine's tailored to geography. But what sort of what are the key skills that you talked about in your personal statement, tailoring it to history and the course? So, what I did, which was, which I think was quite important, was when I talked about the skills in history. So in history, you have stuff like problem solving skills, because um, for people that are doing uh, A level history or even GCSE history, you know that sources. But are really, really, really important, and like sources are at the the middle of history, and that's where you get your information from. So there's a lot of problem solving, figuring out when it was written, who it was written for, the intention, so on, all of these things. So um, I took uh, like five, six skills which I know which are integral to history, but I applied that to the other subjects I was doing. So I did maths, I did uh, psychology, AS. And I did art as well as history. So, and what I did, like problem solving, you know, in maths, maths is all about problem solving. So you can. So I talked about how me doing maths, it was it improved the way I looked at things and the way I looked at. So the way I looked at a, a maths problem, it also changed the way I looked at history source. And then I also talked about not just that. I also talked about art and how art helps you think creatively and how creativity is integral to history and creating like new ideas and new theories and putting your own twist on it yeah and I, so, thought, I thought that was really important so it, it's it's not just about the subject you're doing it's also about how all everything you've done at at A-level, how key, that is going to help. Yeah, you're not just studying that. one subject, right? All your subjects are going to help with your future and what you're going to study at uni. So I think you've hit the nail on the head with with that. That, that is that is key. And I, I, I definitely agree with that. Now, I think the last the big two things I, say, I want to say at the end of that, the personal statement, right, is obviously Nitesh touched on it, but is use the people around you to help you. So like, like Nitesh said, talk to your teachers talk to your friends at school see what just talk it through that will that will help articulate your ideas get your get your get the creativity running in your head and, and it will really help you and obviously your teachers know you really well so they can really help you um and one thing one thing which i know probably sounds should it probably sounds like something i don't need to say but i will say is that have it proofread have it proofread by multiple people because the point of this personal statement is is that you've written it you understand it but if i hand it to my teacher or i hand it to my friend or i hand it to my to my siblings my brother or sister my mum and dad are they going to be able to understand it and if they can't follow it and understand it then you've essentially not followed the first tip have you you keeping it simple so that's personal statement writing so just quick on a, on a quick summary We'll do a back and forth. Let's go to what we've talked about. Let's summarise it in five points then. So I've said, first thing, keep it simple. Yeah. Uh, keep it personal. Keep it personal. Use the people around you. Um, I don't know. Just keep it... Keep it focused. I think that's good. Keep it focused and make sure you include the skills that... You connect yeah. it to your other subjects. Include the skills oh. that the other subjects are giving you. Just, what you're going to learn. Just, just an additional point is uh, after you want to keep a good structure. So it's not just like you you want to have a clear structure. So I started with the story, then the skills, and then I did my own life experiences after that, which is another good which point. is another good thing which we didn't mention. Which is I talked about how my like work experiences have helped me. Yeah, that's a and good then, point. The final thing which I think is really important and I think a lot of a lot of people miss out or ignore is you want to have a good ending to your personal statement. You want to ha- you want to dedicate a sentence or two in its own paragraph 
really short paragraph, but you want to dedicate that to something which is... You want to make it memorable good, because memorable. the person who's reading it, the, the likeliness is obviously they're going to read it from beginning to end, but it's, it's, it's the beginning that's going to bring them in. Obviously, the middle is going to keep them there, but the ending is really going to make them remember what your personal statement was. Yeah, so like you, you want to know that at university, you, you'll be able to engage in the subject. So I ended my personal statement with uh, a quote from a historian, okay, and I kind of expanded on it with, in one sentence. So, and I thought I thought that was quite good, and I thought that actually put me put me above others, some students. I'll tell you what, though. One thing that I should say, though. Now, right now, we're obviously all at home. We're trying to prepare for what's going to, like, coming back to school, so on and so forth. So use this time to actually maybe plan your personal statement, do some reading, so read some books, which are subject-specific in that sense. Like, be- it's not, 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 not even just books, because... You you could even read articles. Articles, yeah, anything. So, so just just keep keep your keep the interest flowing. Keep it keep it so especially like behind me, I've got lots of geography books which I've been trying to get through, which I need to get through. So it's it's probably a prime time to do that now. So I know there was a lot to take in for personal statement writing. This is probably I said the next part is probably the more interesting part, but actually we're talking about a bit of uni experience. So <laughs> I left uni three years. Oh yeah, three years ago. So not 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 that long ago, really. Um, Nitesh is still at uni. Just, yeah. Obviously, when I started uni, I went to UCL. Um, honestly, the main thing I did there was during my first week, I living at home meant that obviously I try I tried to go out as much as possible, but also interact with as many people as possible when I was on the course, because obviously if you're living at living out with people, you you kind of you're with them all the time, sort of thing. So I obviously took. Most of as much as I could in freshers, but one thing I did stick to, especially in my first year, was that me, my friend, and a couple of us lot doing geography actually created a five aside football team, which was actually once a week but tournament style. So actually, there was a league table and it was really competitive, which was really good. It was good exercise for us, it kept us fit, but also because you're playing different five aside teams across the uni, you, you get to know people in different subjects, which is obviously important. So that's like a really fun part of uni if I'm going back I think I should have done more in terms of what I had the clubs and stuff I did joined so on and so forth you're obviously at uni I've seen the stuff that you actually tried to do for uni so what I'm what I'm going to ask you these, these are like the few things I'll quickly want you to go through right so what was the main club or society that you joined what you did for them and I think what will be really interesting for people to hear is how you're ending your time at uni through your, and it's the only way I can describe it, your unbelievable dissertation. Yeah, well, the first the first thing I did was, um, obviously when you when you get to uni, it's, you've got a lot of excitement, but you're also scared about interacting with people and uh, doing things, and that's why Freshers is there. And one thing they do in Freshers is, like, Freshers is not all about, like, going out and partying and all of these things it's like and I know not everyone wants to do that and there's a lot of things which you could do at freshers so you have uh just be at like a fair where where you could meet all the different societies at at university and you could you could see maybe what what group you wanted to go into and I went to and I saw that there was a, a radio group and I've always been interested in media and all those things I, I was even part of the did a few radio shows at Bill as well. So I thought it would be a good idea if I expand on their interest. So when I went to this fair, and I'm, I'm not the kind of person, I don't really like doing going out and doing all that stuff. So I found an, another interest at uni and uh, I went out, I talked to them and I ended up uh, getting a little job at the university radio, which was uh, as lead on photography and advertising so i was i was able to network and stuff like that so although i got like a passion for history i I was able to explore my other interests so i was what i was doing was i was i was taking photos of events of 
the radio presenters and all the things that was happening and I was incorporating that into like I don't know if any of you guys and... obviously obviously we have but like for those of you that's got I don't know if any of you have seen a tiny desk concert but did this actually filmed I guess you his radio is tiny desk concerts, which is quite cool. Yeah, so, I mean, I was able to expand on my personal interests. So, obviously, I have the academic interest, which is history, but that's not all that university is about. It's also about uh, get, gaining experiences and maybe finding other things you enjoy. So, I, when I went into the radio, I was, I was more familiar with, like, actually doing, being part of the radio show, but then... I had a different experience where I was now I was behind the scenes and I mm. now saw how things work and I thought it was really good that you could do those things and there's there's loads and loads of different things like and you you can you can go to multiple societies like it's not it's not just about you're not gonna you might not find the one that you want to go to straight away so you could just try it out and see what you want to do. Obviously, what is your dissertation and why is it different? Well, first thing I want to start off with is, uh, particularly for the students who are going to go to university in the next next September or three or f- three or four years, is that you're in like a transitional phase where universities are trying different things. So I was I was fortunate enough to experience this. So at, at SOAS, we we have two options at the at year at the final year you could do dis- a dissertation or something called a independent study project so an independent study project is you basically get to choose the the medium through which you're going to present your dissertation so and you could you can choose loads and loads of things whatever you want to do and i thought it'd be interesting to make a video documentary rather than a 12000 written written piece because I thought it was it would be more interesting to me and um, more inter- it'd be more tailored to my skill set and I have a I have a particularly hard time writing a lot of words and writing essays and I know that's my course my course is writing essays after essay after essay but the thing that actually drew me to SOAS was that every every university that I looked at for history it was the same you're gonna you're gonna write essays over and over and over again but the thing that stood out for 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 SOAS was that the final year you could you had that option to do whatever you wanted and I thought it was worth it like for me to do those previous two years to get the opportunity to do that to do this and I need to stop you for a second the the whole thing is like 30 minutes I need to make it 10 so just just literally summarize what your documentary is about what you what you're doing it only has to be 10 minutes 10 15 minutes max well, yeah, you can edit like half that. It's not a problem. No, go on. So well, just... so my documentary is on well, I think you migration. Skipped. You said documentary. Huh? Nidesh is doing a documentary as his project instead of a dissertation. Yeah. So the the subject is is um, it's an Indian Ocean migration and how migrating from one place to another ultimately affects cuisine and how like how food is prepared and ingredients and all so on so I'm, I'm i'm focusing on as in my family obviously rahul's family mr taylor's family i say i'm i'm focusing on uh on my family's food culture and how my family going from india to kenya to london how, how what that journey has done to our food and that's that's, that's what I'm doing. Um, I know this has been quite a long video. A long, it's basically your, you guys are watching a chat between me and Nidesh. But I thought it'd be better if I, instead of me talking, get Nidesh to talk about his experiences because he's more fresh. He's still at uni. Um, not saying that I'm old or anything, but it just means it, it just it just probably works out better for you guys mm. watching. I mean, to hear it from someone who's still at uni, who's still quite fresh in the, still quite fresh. I say fresh out of school, but he still remembers his personal statement writing and so on and so forth. Yeah. Just remember that obviously your I mean, teachers are at school to help. Yeah. I've got, I've got a final comment. Yeah, go on. Just that my experience at university is is re- is going to be completely different to 
your um, university experience because considering I the coronavirus has totally changed third year experience mm. and it's totally changed even my first year experience experience has totally changed because of university strikes so I hope that doesn't affect anyone else any of these things but um all the all the stuff which all the bad things that I would say that was bad about uni a lot of them have been because of these of these things which were uncontrollable so I hope hope none of those things actually happen to anyone else and I hope yeah. that you can have a smooth time through university yeah, I, good think, time. I think that's a good good way to end it I just want to say that obviously use your need this vouch for this as well use your teachers ask them for help they're more than they're going to be more than willing to help you with personal statement writing obviously you guys know the situation right now so it's obviously email your teachers um, but obviously when ever we're back to school when that will be just your teachers are there to help they're here to see read through things now i know i'm fairly i'm new to the school as a teacher as as it is so probably a lot of you think i think a lot of you don't really know who i am so that does that still doesn't that still doesn't stop you if you if you, any of you are thinking about doing geography at uni that that doesn't mean you can't come and see me have a conversation with me or if you just want some advice about uni because like i said i'm still quite fresh out of uni I left uni three years ago and then I went back to uni to obviously train, do my teacher training. So uni is still quite a fresh experience for me. So don't be afraid to come and see me um, or any of your other teachers. Um, yeah, just keep safe, keep healthy and keep yourself busy. Thanks, Nidash. Thanks. All right. See ya. See ya. Bye.